All right, I hate having, I hate having to follow this. This was, <laughs> but give me two hours. That's all I'm asking for. Amen. No, have a seat. Have a seat. I'll, I'll make this as painless as possible. But we do just want to encourage you this morning with the word of the Lord. Talk a little bit about, let everybody get settled here for a moment. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for our children. What, a, what an amazing gift you've given all of us. What a responsibility you've given all of us to teach them your ways, to know you at an early age, to lead them toward the, the final chapter of e into eternity, Father. We just, we just pray for that grace to continue to be upon us. And thank you for amazing parents who work hard and struggle and everything it takes to raise children. Thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. So real quick, I just want to throw some thoughts at you as we wrap this up, this production, the gift. I thought a lot about the gift, and, I, and there's a lot of gifts in Scripture, okay? There's a lot of, of concepts that are gifts. There's a lot of truth that is, are gifts to us. Obviously, Jesus, God the Father is a gift. Jesus is a gift. The, the Son is a gift. But I want to kind of focus on one of the promises and that's the gift of eternal life. You know, really, at the end of the day, that's what all of the, where all of this is heading. The, that um, the gift of eternal life has has been proclaimed, and it's working. And it's well, listen, we're 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 all heading there. I I said a really encouraging thing in the first service. I I told them, you're all going to die. Isn't that encouraging? Look at your neighbors. Say, man, I'm pumped. <laughs> well, you know what's appealing about eternal life? Huh? That we all live in this world. We all live in this world where, where there's, there's good and there's amazing things. But then there's this whole thing called death. And, and, and then there's this whole thing that's promised to us called eternal life. And um, I preach a lot of funerals. And I actually... Consider it a great honor to do so. It sounds kind of morbid, but why would I consider that an honor? Because I believe we carry the greatest message on earth, amen? The hope of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, this gift has, the, the gift was given in the past. I mean, the gift of eternal life is, is expansive, okay? It goes backward, it, it's in the present, it's, it's obviously in the future, and and, and it will give eternity, it will bring eternity into the future. If that's said right, I may not have said that right, but the gift of eternal life is just an amazing thing. And it's kind of the gift that keeps on giving. And I like preaching funerals because I can bring, I can't bring hope to the dead person, but I can certainly bring hope and faith to the living person. Amen. About the reality that this isn't all there is. This is, there's, this can be amazing, but it can also be very tough, right? Life can be tough. But this isn't all there is. We're actually, we're just passing through, amen? We're just passing through this. And, and it's important that we understand this truth. Let's remember, eternal life is the gift that keeps on giving. It will give all the way up into our eternity. In, in um, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, there's a scripture I've kind of paraphrased a little bit. It says, for by grace you have received the gift of eternal life, Okay. That's what it's really it's saying. By grace, you've received the gift of eternal life through faith. And this is not your own doing. It's the gift of God, not a result of your work, so that no one can ever brag about that and say, look how amazing I am, and God should have done all this stuff for me. It's No, God has done this for you. He's given you this gift, and it's real. Eternal salvation is a free gift of God poured out upon us through Jesus Christ, apart from any works of our own. Okay, this gift is coming to us. Now, I like one story I like to tell because I like to do funerals. Is, is um, Terry and I years ago? I was supposed to do a funeral out of town, and um, we got all dressed up and headed out there, right? And, and we're, you know, we're, I've been working on a message to bring them the hope of eternal life and and encourage the family and say some good things and. So we do all our part to get out there, and we get to the chapel, or the funeral parlor, and we walk in, and 
we walk down the aisle, and of course we want to pay our respects to the, the deceased. You know, you kind of go, everyone, isn't that awkward? You ever had to do that? You walk up, and there, there's, there's death laying there in front of you, and you know, you kind of do your best to whatever you're doing there, and and uh, we get up there, turn our look in, and, we, and I said, it's the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> Terry looks at me and says, are you kidding me? I said, it's not him. <laughs> now tell me how to get out of that, would you? So here we are, we're up there, we're, and so we just, how did we get out? I don't know, we just kind of slithered on by, and then we, then we had, to, I had a funeral, then we had to figure out where the funeral was that I was supposed to preach, but that was just an awkward moment, right? But that's really not how I want the funeral services to go that I that I preach, but Again, I was, my intentions were good, amen? I was there to bring eternal life. Now, I did a little research, um, just read a few things from some early church fathers about the gift of eternal life, okay? Again, I want to emphasize, not just, not just salvation or eternal, not just saved, but eternal salvation. That's what we're talking about here. Irenaeus, an early church father, spoke of eternal salvation in this way. The Lord himself, who is Emmanuel, right, from the virgin, is the sign of our eternal salvation. The fact that he came, amen, the fact that he lived is the sign from God of eternal salvation. It's not, it's not just a hope, it's a reality, amen. And listen, you're, we're, we're all going to grow a little older as time goes by, and then, you know, you hit your, I don't know what age, people start to die, right? Right? And then you, you got to take a little different look at life. you got to realize this is temporary. I mean, Terry and I have noticed that our kids have been talking more about, you know, if something happens to mom or dad. And I know they think about it. I know they think it's the worst thing that could ever happen to them. And I agree with them. We're amazing. You know what I'm saying? And, and, but here's the thing. As they've been starting to talk like this and think like this, I've been thinking, you know what? You all are pushing 40 yourself. My kids are pushing 40. You know, they're the ones getting old. I stopped aging about 20 years ago. I just declared I'm staying here. Y'all go on where you want to go. Amen? Amen? Who's getting with me? I'm just, amen. amen? But listen, but the reality is um, it's, that happens, okay? And, and, and it, I, I don't want it to be such a horrible thing if, you, if we really understand what's going on here. We're stepping into eternal life that, now how do you, how do you describe eternal life? I'll finish Irenaeus, or Irenaeus in a second. How do you describe eternal life? Eternal salvation, your best day. And how many of you ever had just one of those days that was a, just like the best day ever, amen? We have those, right? I mean, you got a sun, you get up and the sun's shining and you got some money in your pocket and everyone, everyone's in a good mood and you're liking everybody and they're liking you and it's just like the best day ever. I used to tell my kids, on your best day ever on this earth doesn't compare with one moment when you step into the, the reality of your eternal salvation, amen? You're already saved, and if you believe in Jesus Christ, you're, you're already eternally saved if you believe in Jesus Christ. But one day, it says he's gonna return without sin unto salvation, unto fulfilling our eternal salvation, and he's going to read, he says the things like this, behold, listen to this, behold, I make all things new. Now, when I look at that, I start thinking, behold, I have hair all of a sudden again, amen? And behold, I'm, I'm 6'5", 220 instead of 6'5", none of your business, amen? <laughs> and and, and behold, I mean, just beholding all these things. When Anyone ever seen Avatar, the movie? Isn't that what it's called, Avatar? And remember when Jake lies down in his kind of a casket, whatever it was, it looked like a casket. He lies down in that thing, and he's, he's paralyzed. He can't walk, and all of a sudden they do something. The next thing you know, he jumps up out of that thing, and he's running down the fields and high-stepping over stuff. And I'm thinking, yeah, when I step into eternity, one of the first things I want to do is take off running, amen, just because I used to be a really fast runner, and now I'm kind of fair to moderate, maybe even below that a little bit, amen. Anybody with me on this? Any of you older people wish you could run like you could when you're 16, amen? 
well, that's, that's, that's stepping in to eternal life. That's what this whole Jesus thing is really all about. Amen. Well, that's, that's, that's amazing news. Amen. Let me finish here, Nace. He says, it is the Lord himself who eternally saves us. We cannot be saved by our own instrumentality. Therefore, when Paul explains human infirmity, he says, I know there dwells in my flesh no good thing. He thus shows that the good thing of our eternal salvation is not from us. It's from God. It's God's idea. It's God's gift to you, implying that we must be saved by the help of God, not by ourselves. In other words, listen, God wants to eternally save us. Amen. God is not willing that any perish, but all come to eternal life through faith in his, Je in, in his son, Jesus Christ. Now, if you understand the scriptures as far as there's Old Testament, New Testament, a lot of old prophets seeing things about the future way back when. There's one particular prophet that I love. His name is Isaiah. Isaiah has 60-some chapters in it. Great book if you want to read an Old Testament prophet in action. A lot of powerful things in there. Um, but one of the things in, he says in Isaiah 25 has always captured my heart. Because he's, he's lucky, you have to understand the Holy Spirit's upon him and he's seeing the future. He's actually looking into eternal salvation, kind of the, the fulfillment of it and, and the Holy Spirit showing him this. And Isaiah 25, 6 through 9 says, listen to this now. He's seeing the future. And this, is, this is our future, amen, he's talking about. He says, on this mountain... The Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all people, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. Now listen, all that makes heaven sound a little better because that's all stuff we understand. Heaven's a place. It's a kingdom. People eat there. They drink there. They drive. They don't drive electric cars. They, you know, I don't know what kind they drive, but, but, but it's a place. Amen. It's a kingdom. Okay. It's, it's all here. And on the mountain, he will destroy. Listen, this is so good. On the, this is so exciting. On the mountain, he will destroy, God will destroy the shroud that enfolds all people, the sheet that covers all nations. What's the shroud? He will swallow up death forever. Forever. Now listen. Listen. When you're facing death or you've lost someone to death, you can look at it with a whole different mindset, with a kingdom mindset that, God, that number one, they're, if they believe in Christ, they're in the kingdom, right? No, <laughs> number two, God's going to deal with death permanently. It's coming, amen? And when it comes, it says he will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from our faces. I think that's already started because we are already participating in eternal salvation, amen? He will wipe away the tears from our faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. You know what happened? When the Lord has spoken, that means the Lord has spoken. Amen? It's a done deal. It's sealed in heaven. Amen? Forever. Whatever he says is going to happen shall come to pass. That's just how it is. So what Isaiah was seeing was the good news. He, he preached a lot of bad news, and that was the true news that he had to preach under God's command. But he never left out the good news, much of which spoke about eternity. Now, I want to tell a quick story, and then I'm going to share five things I want you to take away from you. I want to talk to you about the worst good news, because I, I like this story. I'm telling you a story just because I like it. I don't even care if you like it. <laughs> I was just teasing. So, I wasn't raised in church. I grew up a pagan Lutheran. Look that up in the dictionary. Can't find it. You can find Lutheran that live like pagans. How's that? There you go. But I was raised that way, and consequently, I just kind of raised, I did, I, I followed the way of my forefathers, whatever my, or really, I should say, whatever my brothers were doing. I had seven older brothers. If they did it, I did it, amen, or, or I did it worse, or better. Maybe it was worse or better, or, but I did it, amen. So at the early age, as, as early as 11, 12 years old, I was probably smoking cigarettes, you know, by the time I was in my teens, 14, 13, 14, I was Somehow, my older friends had introduced me to smoking pot. 
and, and, and none of you would know this, none of you are from the 60s or 70s would understand the thing I'm saying, but we found out when you smoke pot, you get the munchies. So what's that, man? I love, you know, I like food, man, it's even like it better when you got the munchies, okay? So, but we had this plan figured out that when we had the munchies, because we didn't have money, we, somehow we got pot, we have no money, we got the munchies, so we're going to 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven is a great place to steal pizzas, Okay. If you ever tried it, try it sometime. Take a nine-inch tombstone, just slide it right down under your belt, right? I could get better. I could get by with it better then because you know it just didn't stick out. But now, but so we're in there. We'd smoke this stuff, and we went to Seven Eleven, and 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 while we were there, one of those Christians came in who had just coming from a church service. And it must have been some amazing church service because she came in telling us about this thing. She called it a revival. Now, I had no idea what revival meant, right? But all I did know was she was fired up. And within a few minutes, she had relayed to us a few things that you need to understand. Now, understand we're under the influence. And everything's kind of magnified when you're under the influence. So she tells us in her wonderful way that God is mad at you. He's really mad at you, okay? Now, I didn't know that me and God had any issues, but apparently that night I found out God was mad at us. We were lost and going to hell. How many know things are looking pretty dull by then, right? We're, God's mad. We're lost going to hell. Um, and, and it couldn't be any worse. She tells us that you're going to be there for eternity, now, we were bummed out, man. We were, you know, we didn't even know what to do. She, she, this was bad news, people. This was bad news. And then she, she did all that, all that bad news, all that energy, and left us hanging at the cash register. We, we never got the rest of the story. We never got John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We never got that part. We never got what I read to you, Isaiah 25, 6 through 9. We never got Matthew 1, 21, talking about Jesus coming to save his people from their sins. We never got Luke 2, 10 and 11, announcing the birth of a Messiah. We never got Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, by grace you are saved through faith. We never got any of that. So me and my buddies were scared to death, went back to the place where we were smoking all this stuff, Right? and looked up in the sky, waiting at any moment for our demise to come. We thought it was over, man. This was like our last night on earth. Why do I say that? You need to share the good news, too. Amen? There's, there's, there's news, there's truth everyone needs to hear, but you, you can't leave them hanging with just the bad news. There's good news, amen? Remember that God so loved. She, she, should have, she should have added that, right? You know, this is all going on, but God so loves you that he doesn't want you to die. God so loves you that he wants you to live forever in his perfect paradise. God so loves She just should have went off. She never did. She never did. And it made me think about, thinking about that made me think about Josiah's last few messages. Because Josiah started out this Advent series on the dark side. He told us that. Ta taking us to places where we could almost feel Darth Vader. Remember that? <laughs> that noise he made. <laughs> you could almost feel Darth Bra Vader breathing down in the back of your neck. And as Josiah was telling us the truth. And he, he talked to us about the truth of suffering. And it was. He talked to us about it. It was awesome. He talked about evil. And it's a reality. And he... And <laughs> You can hear it. And he talked about God's wrath toward the sinner who are literally dead in their sins with no way of escape. And he talked about us encountering the frustration, remember this one, of trying to save ourselves and, and believing falsely that we could actually do it. And he talked about our weakness, that most of us can't, you know, think we're super self-controlled and we can't say no to a cookie, you know. We need the Lord's help for salvation. And he talked to us about this. Not, and, and, and all the things he talked to us are about tr were true. We need to hear them. People are lost and they need to be found. 
But the fact that they're lost is one of the greatest reasons Jesus came. Amen. To seek and to save the lost. And in this broken world of ours, the creation and the creature are both groaning, longing for eternal salvation. And is anyone glad that while Josiah let Darth Vader camp on our conscience, he didn't leave us there? He didn't leave us there. The most important thing he brought out, this is what Christ has done for us. This is what he has freed us from. This is what he is preparing for us. Now, you may not like what I'm about to say. How many believers in the house? Just throw your hand up if you're a believer. Okay? You're going to be with me forever. Sorry. You are stuck. Amen? Think about that when you're in relationship with each other in this church. You are stuck like glue for eternity. Are you, now I know, I've looked at people just like you have. I've looked at people and said, are you sure he's going? Come on, how many of you ever did that? You know, there's no way this dude's gonna make it. You know what I'm saying? No, but there's, but there, I don't wanna surprise you, but when we get there, you're gonna find out there's people there that you didn't think should have made it. And they're looking at you going, how the heck did you get here? <laughs> By grace, we are eternally saved through faith and that not of ourselves, amen. It is the gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. I'm going in because Jesus has made a way for me to partake of his eternal life right now and into the realization of eternity. Now, I'm going to wrap this up in record-breaking time. I want dollars and tens and twenties thrown on the altar because I'm going to get you out of here early. Just joking. Here we go. Five reminders about eternal salvation I want you to hold on to over the Christmas holiday season. Number one, don't forget that Jesus is the only Savior of the world, okay? Everyone hear me? Jesus is the only Savior of the world. Angels and prophets heralded his coming. Acts 4.12 says salvation is found in no one else For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. If you are counting on the name of Jesus, placing your faith and trust in Jesus, you will be saved, you are saved, and you'll be saved all the way into our eternal salvation. Amen? Somebody give God a shout over that. Amen? That's good news. Now, number two, don't forget that Jesus came to save us from something. We all have some things, amen? Matthew 121 says, she will give birth to a son and you're to call him the name Jesus because he will eternally save his people from their sins. Aren't you glad he's gonna cover all your sins and not just half of them, amen, or a third of them? He's got them all covered, amen, so we can step into this eternal salvation. Don't forget that his saving power is alive and well on planet Earth. What he's done for one person, he can do for another. You ever look at someone, man, I wish I could be like that person. Man, you know, they never sin. They never have, a, yeah, baloney. You know, but don't know. He, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ever even ask or imagine. Romans 1.16 says, I am not ashamed of the good news because it is the power of God that brings eternal salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. That's all of us, amen? Number three or four, don't forget that he is able to save us completely. That's the beautiful thing about eternal salvation. It starts here. It's already going on. Eternal salvation is working in me. If you're a believer today, eternal salvation is working in you already. And he's able to save us completely, or another thing says, to the uttermost, okay? Hebrews 7, 25, but because Jesus lives forever, he is a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to eternally save completely those who come to God through him because he is always lives to intercede for him. Last one, don't forget the dangers of neglecting such a great Salvation. Let me read the scripture, we'll close. For since the message spoken through angels was binding and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape 
if we ignore so great an eternal salvation. This eternal salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by signs, wonders, various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Take all that with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this amazing house. Thank you for beautiful people. Thank you for the gift, the free gift of eternal salvation that we experience through your son. May all the joy and hope and faith of that reality be manifest in our lives as we go through this Christmas season. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I love you, Rock Church. God bless you. Thank you.